Well, hello, people. Today is another Commander unboxing video. This one is this one's an older one, but it's a pretty good one. It's the Calvex deck or the Arcane Mailstorm, and this is a, I just wanted to yeah, check it out. An unboxing. We're gonna go over all the cards. What I think of the cards in here. If they synergize the deck. It's a good for the players. You know all the all that stuff. So I'm just gonna try to get this one. Very easy to open their product at the very least, so that's good. Alright, so separate everything here. We got our lovely deck box. It's pretty big. First I'm gonna show you the giant card that they give you. I used to do this, they don't do it anymore, but here's a giant Calamex. Looks pretty awesome. I like the I like I like the idea of this. You get a giant version of your commander. You just kind of use this deck race, you don't put in your deck, obviously, because it would look silly. But, I think it's a pretty cool concept, overall. It's pretty cool. I'm going to go over the deck. Get a, I'll put the rules here. Get a, kind of get some information about the deck. What the deck wants you to do. It even gives you a little bit of tips there. It's it's kind of cool. I guess if you play or you don't know how the deck works, that would be interesting. Also gives you some basic commander rules. So this is a commander deck, which does point out some pretty notable things that you need to know about the format. So that's nice. What's on this side? This side, it just gives you some more about some of the creatures or cards in the deck. That's pretty cool. Anyway, we got this next here, we got the life counter thing again. I'll say this all the time, but these are fine. If you have dice, or if you're playing that spell too, you're not going to need this. I think it's just a nice addition if you really are just brand new to Commander and you don't have dice yet. Which they give you dice of everything, so I don't know. This blank card, I don't even know what that's for. Now we have the deck. And, uh, oops. Oh, it's so nice. It's so nice to open like that. So we got this on the side for now. And then we open the deck. So obviously the first thing we're going to over is the commander, which is Calmix the Store of Sire. So for one green, blue, and red, you get a 4-4 legendary elemental dinosaur. When we cast your four your first instant sorcerer instant spell each turn, if Calmex is tapped, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. One of you copy an instant sort, an instant spell, put a plus counter on Calamax. So this is an interesting theme, so obviously it wants you to play a bunch of instants, and then you get to copy them every turn. And you also will get counters for copying spells. It's an interesting spell theme that only goes in instant, because usually it will go to instants and sources, so kind of why I said that there. This is not a bad commander. I, the tap thing is kind of interesting. There's not really a lot of tapping going on, it's kind of just that. I think this is kind of a restriction to see you can't really abuse it that much. Next up we have, this is an alternative commander. If you want to play a different thing, different idea, you get an interesting commander. You, you get Citrus, the Withering Storm. So for two, blue, green, blue, red, you get a free five legendary stake with Diathan, which is interesting creature types. Uh, flying, one of your opponent draws a card, except for the first one they draw each turn. You get to create a 1-1 one -one green snake creature token. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw the main cards. So the idea of this is you could draw is make make your opponents draw a whole bunch of cards, give you snakes, and then when this hits face, you'll both get to draw a lot of cards. This is an interesting thing because it's a draw theme, but it's it affects your opponent drawing cards. So if you're it's like another draw deck, it's really good. But yeah. Let's have we have a partner pairing, which is it's just interesting. It's it's a cool one though. So first partner we have Helden, even Arcanus. So for Tuna Blue you get a 1-4 legendary human wizard who partners with Arcane Retriever, which we'll be going over in a moment here. And the partner mechanic with cards like these is that when they enter the battlefield, you can have a player search for Paco, basically, on your hand. Which I like because it allows you to easily get the two cards into play. And he's a 1-4 human wizard. And it lets you play non-creature spells in exile, which fetch counters on them, if you exile them. And then you can spend mana of any color to cast those spells. So basically, it allows you to cast all the spells that your Paco was going to be giving you. 
And then there's Paco, the Paco Arcane Retriever. You got for free red and green, you get a free free legendary elemental hound, which that would be an elemental dog because they did change that. Obviously, he's partnered with Helden. They tell you how that really works him, so they decided not to put it on here. Palco's free free. He has haste, and whenever Palco attacks, exile a card of each player's library. Put a fetch counter on each of them. Put a plus counter on Palco for each non-creature card exiled this way. So it's a very cool pairing because Palco wants you to attack with him. He gets to exile stuff, and you get more options to play with. And then with Helden, you'll get to play those cards later on. It's just, it's a really cool pair, and I, I really like this. There's a lot of directions you go with this. So we get some tokens, you get some goblin warriors, you get a, you get a beast, you get some more beast, more beast, more beast. How many beasts are there? Some saplings. Some of these are double sided, yep. Get some drake tokens, bird illusion, a couple snakes, and some treasure. So we, so our first card here is Command Tower. It's a land that lets you tap for one one color of any mana and your commander's color ID. This is always a good land, especially in a multicolored deck. So it's a nice inclusion here. Next we have Frontier Bibblewhack. This is the tri-colored land. It comes to play tap, but it can tap for any three of your colors. These are alright, they're kind of slow, but I think they're decent as budget lands. Next you got Rule Turf. This is a... Land it comes to play tap, it's a bounce land, so bounce the land when it's just battlefield. But it can tap for red and green. The bounce lands are kinda slow, but they're not bad. They're really just decent lands that you can put in pretty much any deck. Next you got Hamar Death. So it's a land it comes to play tap. When there's battlefield, you can look at the top three cards of your library and put them back in any order. And then you can tap it out of blue. There's actually a lot of synergy with this because there are lots of cards in this deck. That can potentially light and cast stuff atop your deck. Like Palco, like Paco lets you like exile crypt cards, you can manipulate what you're gonna get there. There's a lot of cool synergies you can do with this. It's a cool land. Next we get Is it Boil Works? It's, it's a land that comes to play tapped. When there's Battlefield return land you control in your hand, so it's an air bounce land. This one could create a blue and a red. This one's I mean, it's kinda the same thing as the other one. It's it's fine. It's a it's a basic well, it's a it's a budget land. But yeah, next we get a mirrored landscape. It's a land that comes to play tapped. You can tap for colors, or you can tap two and tap a sacrifice mirrored landscape. You get the two basic land cards with the same land type and put them play tapped and shuffling library. This is always a good land option, especially if you're not in green, I would say. And this is, well, there is green in this deck. I think it's still a viable option. Next you got. Rupt, rupt your spire. So it's a land that comes tap, and when it enters battlefield, you sacrifice it unless you pay one, but it can tap for one may of any color. There are better options than this, like the command tower. So I think this is like, this is easily upgradable, but it's not bad out of the box. Next, you get Simic Rope Chamber, another bounce land. This one is the Simic one, obviously, because of the name. And yeah, I think that, I think the bounce lands in general, especially the ones are a little weaker. Next you got Rugged Highlands. This is the tap dual lands that give you a life when they enter. These are these are cool. But usually you play them early on and usually they put you on the throne, so most people will just attack you. So sometimes they do draw some attention. Let's get Shift Water Cliffs. This is the Is It version. And it's just like the same one, but it's a little bit better since it's not a green land. Thornborn Falls, this is the Simic one. This is the Simic Tap Gain of Life land. I don't even know what you call these, but yeah, it's still pretty good. Then we got some forests. I'm just gonna kind of skim through. You get you get eight forest. You get five islands and two mountains. Oh, two mountains. That's kind of low. Now for all the lands, then we actually get to get to the good stuff, which is the cards. So first up, we have Decoy Gambit. For two in the blue, it's an instant. Which for each opponent you get to choose up to one target creature that player controls and then return that creature to its own hand. Unless that controller has you draw a card. So this is an interesting spell since it affects each it could affect each opponent. Since you can make them draw make you give you get a card or you get the bounce in it. It's a little worse since your opponent gets to choose what the outcome is, so they're just gonna choose the better outcome for themselves. It's a decent option though, especially as an instant. Just be all of nowhere and be like, hey, give me a card. And I bet you a couple players would be like, no, I don't want to give you a card. I'll 
I'll take my creature back, thank you. Then you get Eon for for liquor. So for two and double blue, you get a five-five elemental otter. Is flying when there's the battlefield. If you cast it, an opponent takes an extra turn up to this one, and but until your next turn, you gain protection from that player. Which it's an interesting effect because it's it's very because obviously giving your opponent an extra turn is really bad, but gain protection that player means that you really won't have to worry about the consequences of giving that player an extra turn. This also has pretty good stats as a 5 5 flyer. This is an interesting build around, I would definitely say. But I think it's decent enough for starting. Next, you got Nezik Metamorph. So you got for one and a blue, you get a 1 1 Shape Shifter. And when it attacks or blocks, a target opponent reveals cards tapped in the library until they hit a creature card. And then Metamorph will become a copy of that card until on the turn. Then they put all the cards revealed and bomb their library in random order. So it's a it's it's an interesting shapeshifter. It doesn't it's a little bit worse since it is completely random what you're gonna hit, unless you somehow manipulate the top card of the deck. There are ways to do that, but not a lot. It's it's definitely a funny gimmick, but I, I feel like most of the time you just kinda get whatever you hit. Except the Fletting Swan. This is a really good red red spell. So for tuna red, it's an instant, but if you control your commander, you can play a spell for free, and it lets you redirect the target of a spell or ability. This is a really good red card. It's like 40 bucks, so it's actually really worth it in this deck. And the fact that it has Calmex so is pretty cool. I like this cycle because it's because the fact that it basically just wards you from your commander, which most decks do. So it's like, hey, now you get a free spell that can protect your stuff or mess with other people. It's a really fun card. Next up, you have Lava Lava Brink Floodgates. So for free and a red, you get an artifact. Tap for two red mana at the beginning of each player's upkeep. That player can put a doom counter on this card or remove a doom counter. And then, if it has three or more doom counters, you sacrifice the floodgates. And then, when you do, it deals six damage to each creature. It's kind of a really interesting politic card because you can kind of mess with opponents where you can be like, hey, if you put a doom counter on this, like, you know, we could like the board. Like, you can work together to wipe like one guy's board out, or you can just hold it back for as long as possible. It's a really interesting card because it gives a lot of versatility to what you can do as a board light. Next you have Curious Herd. So for free and a greeting and instant, which you choose an opponent and you get free, free, free beast, green beast creature tokens or access more of artifacts that player controls. Obviously if you're playing against artifact deck, this is going to be amazing. You're going to get so many beasts. Well, if you're playing in commander, there's probably going to be a couple of players that just have like mana rocks and just good artifacts general so you're probably gonna get at least three or four beasts on average when you play this that's pretty cool next you got glade muse for two in a green you get a two four beast and where a player casts a spell if it is not their turn that player draws a card it's actually really good in the deck because of the fact that you want to be casting instants every single turn so it's going to reward you for doing that it's also going to help other players out there playing a control deck. So sometimes this could, this could hurt you, but I think this is pretty good in the deck. Next you get Ravenous Giga No Defer that. That's a long name. But for 5 and a double green, you get a free free beast with Devour. Free Devour is an old mechanic, but basically as it enters the battlefield, you sacrifice any more creatures, and it comes in with uh, that many comes in with free plus counters times more creatures you sacrifice. So if you sacrifice three creatures with this, it'll come with nine plus counters, which is pretty amazing. And when it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage divided as you choose among up to X target creatures, where X is power. But then those creatures get to do damage equal to its power to the Ravenous. I'm not sure why this is in here. I don't see the synergy. This is like a spell deck, and then you just get a creature that wants you to play a whole bunch of tokens. Like, there's some token producers in this deck, but they're kind of situational, or at least what we've seen so far. This is an interesting tick in the deck. I'm not 100% sure how... I'm not sure how much is going to come up. Like, most of the time, you gotta, there's not a lot of creatures in the deck, so you're probably not going to... You're probably not going to build around this in the deck, but you can definitely build around this other decks to be pretty good. Next you got 20 staff, so for free you get an artifact, which if you would copy a spell one or more times, it's say you get to copy it that many times, plus one, and you may choose the targets for the, the additional copy. 
And then you can tap 7 and tap into combat target, insert sorcery, spell and control. You choose new targets. It's kind of interesting because you are, with your commander, Kalmex, you're going to be co uh, copying a lot of instances every turn. So it's going to you make two co uh, copies of it. So Kalmex will get bigger. This is a really good synergy in the deck. The second, the tap ability, it's a little expensive, but it's definitely a good ability if you can manage to find mana for it. Next you get Jace Architect Thoth. So this is a for two and double blue. It's a legendary planeswalker Jace. He starts with four loyalty. His free abilities, his, his plus one is that until your next turn whenever a creature or bonus controls attacks, it gets minus one, minus so until on the turn. It's minus two, reveals top three cards of your deck. An opponent separates them into two piles. You get to put one to your hand, then the rest goes to bottom library in any order. As my say is that for each player, you get to search that player's library for a non-land card and exile it. Then you shuffle their libraries, and you can cast those cards without paying their mana cost. They're saying, could they get this in this in this year's Planeswalker in these Commander decks, where they made it, where they just put a Planeswalker in here? This one's actually pretty decent in the deck, because the plus one is really good at protecting you, since it makes their creatures weaker whenever they attack. Minus two is basically just a worse factor friction, but it's still pretty decent in the deck. The minus eight, if you can get to it, that's actually a really good ability. Especially since it affects all players, including yourself, so you can get their most powerful spells for free. Which can definitely help you win games. Let's see, next you get Lunar Mystic. So for two and double blue, you get a 2-2 two, two Human Wizard. And whenever you cast Instant Spell, you may pay one if you do draw a card. This is really good in the deck. Obviously, you're casting Instant, so you're going to be able to draw a lot of cards with this over the course of the game. Next you got Nibis of Frost. For, so for two and a double blue, you get a free free spirit as flying and prowess. Prowess is when we cast that creature spell, it gets plus, plus, plus one to one turn. And whenever you cast into your sorcery spell, tap target creature punk controls, that creature doesn't untap to control the next untap step. Alright, this is actually pretty decent in the deck since it can just tap your opponents out of the game. It's a slow ability because it does require you to cast into sorceries. Well, of course, again, I think you're going to get your mana's worth out of this. Next, you get Swarm I Intellect. Intelligence. So, for six in blue, you get Enchantment. And whenever you cast into a Sorcery spell, you can copy that spell and then choose new targets for it. So, obviously, this is just really good. as It just doubles all your spells as long as it's down. It is pretty expensive. Enchantment costs seven. But I think once you go past the fact that you just spend an entire turn playing a champion doing nothing, you'll be able to really pop off with this. Next you got Torland, Sky Summoner. So for 2 and double blue, you get a 2-2 legendary merfolk wizard. And if we cast into a sorcery, you get a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying. This is a really good in just about any spell deck, since you're just making free tokens. That's usually one of the best downsides with spell decks, they usually don't play a lot of creatures, so this definitely helps you there. And making a whole bunch of drakes in your drake army. Next you have Chaos Swarm. For two and a red, it's an instant where uh, the owner of target permanent will shuffle into their library, then they flip the top card. If it's a permanent, you get the fun to play. So this is a really fun, a wacky card. It's also a pretty good card, especially since it's um, like it's sort of removal, but it's really not because your opponent will, will potentially get something off of this. But most time, whenever they get will probably be way worse than what they had before, especially if you're Chaos Warping it. It's a pretty funny card, I think it's pretty cool as a card in general. Next you get Charm Breaker Devil, so for 5 and already you get a 4-4 four, four Devil, at the beginning of your up upkeep, return into a sorcery from, from your group to your hand at random, and when it casts into a sorcery, Charm Breaker Devils gets plus 4 plus 0 so until on the turn. That upkeep ability is definitely the part you want to keep in mind here. It can get a bunch of power, but it really needs trample to kind of go crazy with that. Next you get Comet Storm. So for X and double red you get an instant with multi kicker one, so you can pay additional one for you can pay additional one each time you wanna as you cast the spell, and you can choose any target. Then choose another target for each time this spell is kicked, and Comet Storm deals X damage to each of them. This is a really heavy mana investment card. We have to put a lot of mana into this, basically. You get to do a whole bunch of damage to one thing, and then if you pay the multi kick cost, you can spread that damage among multiple things. It can really wreck a board, but it is very mana intensive, so it's it's a decent card. 
X you get commune with lava. So for X and double rend, you get instant, which is exile top X card in your library until the end of your next turn. You can play those cards. So obviously this is a pretty pretty decent card draw. Well, it's impulse draw, not really card draw. But yeah, it's it's pretty good. It can get your mana's worth, especially doing the end phase. You get a whole turn to play them. And especially the fact you're probably going to be hit a lot of instants will allow you to just cast it from there. Next you have a dual caster mage for so for one and a double right you get two two human wizard with flash and when there's the battlefield you copy insert sorcery and make new targets for it. Obviously this is just a really decent creature in any spell related deck for that matter because it just lets you say hey I'm going to copy this spell and make a new cap and make new targets like it's really decent. This guy, Tali Promised Her. How many times have they printed this card now? It's crazy. But for, in case you didn't know, uh, Tali is for four and double red. It's a legendary elder dinosaur. And when it attacks, exile top card for each player's library, and they can cast any of non lane cards from among them without paying their mana cost. This is a pretty fun card, and it can fit in a lot of decks. It's just a pretty easy card by itself, since it can get out of hand pretty quickly if it stays in the board for multiple turns. It's a pretty cool card. I do like that this card is getting reprinted a lot of decks. I think it's a really fun card because it's like, oh, why are they going to hit? And they get the cast free stuff. It's really cool. Next, you get Goblin Dark Dwellers. So, for free and double red, you get a 4 4 Goblin with Menace. Where's Battlefield? You may cast ins target insert sorcery, whatever mana cost free or less from gear, without many mana cost. But if it put be put into the graveyard, this turn is exile. So it's a, it's a kind of it's a little expensive creature, but the fact that you get to play a cheap instant sorcery for free is definitely worth it. Next, you get Star Storm. So for X and double red, you get an instant which deals X damage to each creature, and it is cycling free. Cycling is that you can just pay the the cycling cost, discard and draw a card. This is pretty good at all stages of the game, especially cycling in general because. In the line, you can throw this away and get something else, but later in the game, if you really need a, a, a board wipe, you can play this. It's pretty decent for what it does, especially cycling. Cycling always makes a card just so much better. Next, you have Strength of the Tar of the tar Drew Drew. So for X and double green, you get an instant with multi kicker one, so you can pay additional one. You pay additional one. Any number of times you cast it, and you get to choose a creature, then choose another creature for each time the spell is kit, and put X plus counters on those creatures. So if you have a lot of mana up, this can put a lot of counters on all your creatures. It's a pretty cool ability. I don't know how good it is in this deck, but it's pretty fun. He's got Artifact Mutation. For, for a red and a green, you get an instant which destroys an artifact, it can't regenerate. And you get to make X while one green sapling creature tokens for X is the artifacts convert to mana cost. This is a pretty decent effect. Usually you'll get at least two or three. But if you hit like a big price artifact. This is a pretty cool card mm -hmm. in general. Because I mean you get to destroy some and you make a whole bunch of tokens. You can be playing in pretty much any deck. It's it's awesome. Next you got Dijin Illuminous. So for five and hybrid blue red. Two, two hybrid blue red. It's a free five Dijin with flying, and each source instant sorcery you cast has replicate. The replicate is equal to its mana cost. So when you cast that spell, you can copy it for each time you pay its replicate cost. So if you just have a whole bunch of spare mana around, you can turn something like a shock into like six or seven shocks. That could be pretty powerful. Especially with Calamax, you're going to be copying a lot of spells, so you can get a lot of value off of that. Next you get Melek. Is it? Horgon. For 4, blue, and red, you get a legendary 2-4 weird wizard. And you can play with the top, and you play the top card of your library revealed. You can cast instant sorceries from the top of your library. And whenever you cast instant or sorcery from your library, copy it, and you may choose new targets for the copy. It's a pretty interesting effect because it lets you just start cascading from the top of your deck and you get to copy spells so it will make Calmex bigger. This is, this is good synergy in the deck. Next you got Probatic Bolt. So for free, blue, and red you get instant which deals 4 damage to a target and then you can look at the top 4 cards of your library, pull it into your hand, and the rest of your library in any order. 
this is pretty decent as it not only does damage but it lets you dig for a, a card that you might need it's a little expensive on five mana but it does a lot for five mana so i think it's worth it next you got rashmi attorney's crafter so for two green and blue you get a two free legendary elf druid and whenever you cast your first spell each turn you have real top fairy library if it's a non-land card or mana cost less than that spells you may cast it without paying its mana cost and if you don't you get to put the card in your hand it's a pretty cool effect it's really interesting build around you can play it as a commander which is pretty fun and i think it's pretty decent with most spells and most spells are going to be Especially later in the game, more expensive. You're going to hit, probably going to hit more stuff. It, it can, it can get pretty cool with this. Next, you get Ward, the Raid Mutter. So for four and two hybrid red green, you get a free, free legendary Goblin Shaman. When Ward enters the battlefield, create two one one red and Goblin Warrior creature tokens. And it gives each of your red and green into the sorceries you, you cast conspire which conspire means when we cast the spell you could tap two untapped creatures you control that you're covered with it and when you do you get to copy the spell and choose some targets for it so this is obviously a pretty cool effect since it kind of combines creatures and spells together in a really interesting fashion i think this is really good in the deck because obviously you want to be copying a lot of spells and this definitely helps you do that Next you get Psalm Sermacum, so for four, two, uh, for four you get a 2-2 two, two artifact, artifact creature golem and when Psalm enters the battlefield you get to search for a base land, put a play tap and shuffle library and when Psalm dies you get to draw a card. I think everybody's seen Psalm at this point, he's really good in any non green deck that needs some ramp, he also could be used in general as it gives you a free card and you seem to go to late in the game because of that draw effect and you could have used that but there's not really a way to in this deck i think it's just a good card in general next you get cinder glade this is a mountain forest land which can either tap for a red or green which will come to play tap when you go to a base land this is a fantastic land especially on a budget that's it's very easy for a deck to just come to play untapped most of the time next you get desolate lighthouse so, which is a colorless land, but you can pay one blue and a red and tap to blue, which is draw a card and just and then discard a card. This layer in the game can, can let you get for your deck and help you find what you need. So that's always really awesome. Exotic Orchard. This is a land which can have for any colored mana the opponent could produce. In a free colored deck, it's very likely that your opponents are going to be playing at least two of the colors most time it will be free but sometimes there will be a missing color usually this is just a good land in general next you get Kessick Old Front this is a colorless land taps for colorless and then you pay X red and green and tap to give target creature plus X plus O and trample then turn this is really good especially with the commander eventually you'll just make them big enough to just one or two shot people which is pretty cool because it kind of goes away from that instant sorcery theme kind of goes in more a combat focus thing you can also do with Palco and stuff. There's a really a lot of things you can go with it. Muswari Valley, this is a land which can you pay one and tap to add red green. This is a little band tap. I don't think this is the worst land ever since you do get an extra you do get your mana's worth since you do get an extra mana when you activate it. Mosswar Bridge. This is a this is a hideaway land. So it comes play tapped, and when it does, you get to look top of cards in your library. You can put one face down, the rest of your library. Taps are green, and then you can pay green and tap into exile. You can play the exile card while paying its mana cost if you have creatures, power, total power tied or greater. This is definitely the easiest one that can do out of all the highway lands. I like the highway lands general because like early on you can just play as a land, and then later on you can just cast this big flashy spell out of absolute nowhere. Pretty cool. Next you have Orm Leaf the Vastwood. This is a this is a this is a green land. Because play tap, tap for a green. You can also tap it to a scatter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. So if you're playing a token deck, any green token deck, this is just a really good inclusion. This is decent in the deck. There are a couple of token producers, especially ones that made green. So this could give all your guys just so much more power. Next you got Scavenger Grounds. This is a land, but it's also a desert. So you can tap for colors 
and they can pay two and tap, sacrifice the desert, exile all cards from all graveyards. This is a really good card in any non-black deck. Because this is definitely the best way out of black to exile all graveyards. Since obviously black has the... I can't think of the name. But just being able to hate on the graveyards, especially in a non-black color, is just amazing and so important to Commander. Next you got you have a Maya Coast. This is the this is the pain lands, so you can pick you can tap in a pink, get a colors, or you can tap in and get a, a blue or a green, but it deals the damage to you. These are pretty decent and usually the damage won't matter until later in the game, so it's always pretty helpful. Looks like we get some more basic land. I'm not sure why they're separated, but yeah, you get three more mountains or at least what we see. Next you get Bonders Ornament. So it's a free mangan artifact. Tap for one may of any color, and they can pay four and tap it. Each player control the perm controls this permanent draws a card. It's kind of a weird card. There's some weird things you can do with it, but usually it's just going to be four mana draw a card, which is kind of slow. But there's probably some weird deck that can take advantage of this and make everyone draw a whole bunch of cards, which is an interesting theme of it. You get Arcane Saint is just a good mana rock in general, but. In case you know what Arcane Saint does, it's two mana for an artifact, you can tap for one mana of any color, total identity, and this is basically just command tower on a artifact. This, this is still really good mana rock in general, and it's nice that they get to print this in multiple decks. Next you get Commander Spear, another, another good mana rock of the commander format, or at least it used to be. But for free mana you get an artifact which is capped for one mana of any color in your commander's account identity. And any time you can just sacrifice commander spirit draw a card. This is a pretty decent mana rock. Free mana is a little expensive for a mana rock. But I think the fact that early on you can use it as a mana rock. And then later in the game when you don't need any more because you have a lot of mana. You can just get rid of it any time for free or in response to a board wave and get your card draw. It's just a really good card. Next you got Lightning Greaves. So for two you get artifact equipment. And its equip cost is zero, and it gives the equipped creature haste and shroud. Link Greaves is a pretty good equipment in any deck that wants to protect their commander, especially considering the fact the equip cost is free. I mean, you can just slide this, the Greaves around on the different creatures. Maybe you're going to use this on your commander, but sometimes there is a valuable creature that you do want to keep on the board. You can do that. Next, you have Soul Rain, probably the most well known card in Commander. For one man again, artifact, taps for two colors. This is a fantastic card, and I do like that they print in pretty much every deck to date. Well, except for that new one. But, yeah, this is always a nice card to reprint. Still a couple dollars, despite the fact, but the fact that they do reprint this in every commander deck is really is really one of the best things that they've done in these commander decks. And I just hope to continue seeing Soul Rain printed in all decks. I just get Class of Titans. For free and double red, you get an instant, which makes a creature fight another creature. This is a, it doesn't, rest it doesn't make one of your creatures fight. This is kind of a cool effect because you can just make the two biggest creatures fight and then probably one or possibly even both will die. It's a little, it's a little expensive, but I think it's a really good effect. Definitely worth the mana cost. Next you got Channeled Force. For two, blue, and red you get an instant, which is additional cost to cast this. You just got X card. Which then lets a player draw X cards and then this will deal X damage up to one target creature, one creature or planeswalker. So this is this does where you have a lot of cards in hand to really benefit from it. But it but it definitely gives you it, it gives you all your cards back and gives you some damage to throw around. Next guy, Prile and Path Epiphany. So for one green and blue, you get enchantment, which begins your upkeep. You draw a card if you control the creature with the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a scatter on a creature you control. This is all right in the deck. This is usually better in a much more creature intensive focused deck. But I feel like Calamax, Calamax can get very big out of hand. So, most time you will be able to get the extra card draw. Next, you get Psychic and Pestis. So, for two and a blue, it's an enchantment aura where you enchant a creature. The chain creature gets plus two and is goaded. Goaded means that the creature has to attack each turn of Fable, but can't attack the player that owns, and then can't attack the player that owns the spell. And then whenever the chain creature attacks, you scry two. The, uh, the goat, of, the goat enchantments are pretty interesting because you can put them in your own creatures, make them bigger, 
have them attacking. But they can also spawn your opponent's creatures to not only make incentivize them to swing with it. Well, they'll have to. But it makes it so that, that the creature can't just come back to, to haunt you or maybe hurt you. And I think these are pretty interesting enchantments to kind of political with because you'd be like, hey, that guy's got the. So, next card is the Shiny Impentus. Impentus. So, tune a red, it's an enchantment aura, which chance a creature. Because that creature plus two plus two and goaded, which I explained goaded earlier. And whenever a creature, a chance creature attacks, you create a treasure token. Again, this is per again this is pretty cool because it gives you value for the creature attacking. This one's a little bit. This one I think is a little bit better since the treasure token will give you um, future mana. But I think it's still a pretty cool card. And then we have Predatory Impediments, the final version of the Goaded Enchantments. So for four and a green, you get a enchantment or a chance creature. Chain creature plus three plus three must be blocked to fable and is goaded. This one's interesting because this one, is, unlike the other ones, doesn't really want the creature to attack. It just wants it to be super big and then just force your opponent to get rid of their creatures one by one. It's pretty cool. It's it's always, these go these goaded enchantments are always pretty fun to mess with people. So yeah, it's kind of cool that you put in the deck. You get Chemistry's Insight. So for free in a blue, you get an instant, which draws two cards, and then also has Jumpstart, where Jumpstart is that you cast the card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to its utter cost, and then you get to exile the card. So this one's actually pretty decent because it gives you two cards, and then later on you can get two more cards by paying the cost again, but getting rid of a card, so technically that one will just give you a hand neutral. This one just gives you a free plus one. This is always pretty, this is just a decent card in any spell deck in general. I should get Frantic Search for two and a blue. This is an instant, which you draw two and then discard two and not to free lands. This is actually a really good card because the spell is essentially free because it just untaps all the mana you spent casting the spell. So it's a great cantrip effect to not only cast instants, but you get to untap lands and draw cards. So it's just a really good spell all around. I should get Murmuring Mystic. For free and a blue, you get a 1-5. Human Wizard, and one of your cats instead of sorcery, you get a 1 1 blue illusion creature token with flying. This can get a hand pretty quickly, and you get a whole bunch of birds. You also have this really good defend defending creature on the ground. So it's a really good creature, just about any spell deck. Let's get Whiplash Trap. For free and double blue, you get an instant trap, where if an opponent has had had two or more creatures and battlefield under their control this turn, you can pay one blue for this spell's cost. And then it lets you return two target creatures or something. Trap's always a pretty cool card in general because they can be super cheap if your opponent does stuff. Being a one cost bounce two creatures is really good. Five mana's still pretty decent for this, but usually if you get this for one mana, it'll definitely be worth it. I see get surviving memoir. So for free and uh, red, you get a sorcery, unless you return an instant card at random from your graveyard to your hand. It also has rebound, which rebound means if you cast the spell from your hand, you get to exile it as a result. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can recast the spell from exile by paying its mana cost. This is a pretty good card in the deck, obviously, because there's a lot of instants in the deck, so being able to just get them back, even if at random, is still a really good effect, especially in red. Next you get Crop Rotation. So for one green you get an instant, which additional cost casts a spell, sacrifice a land. Search your library for a land card, put it in, put into play, then shuffle your library. This is a really good mana fixing card, as it allows you to trade a basic land for one of your much better lands in the deck. This is always just a really good card in general, but it's even better in this deck because of all the all those enchantments and stuff. So you get next you have Evolution Charm. For one in a green you get an instant, which has a couple effects. So you get to choose one. So you can search your for base land, reveal and put it in your hand and shuffle, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand, or give target creature flying to another turn. These are all pretty decent effects. Usually the effect you're going to use the most is the first effect to get a land. But being able to return a creature and give a creature flying is a is pretty good, especially when you get to choose one out of three of them. So you get, next we have Haro. Haro for two and a blue is a, no, two and a green is Instant, just no cost, cost, cast it, sacrifice a land, you get to search for two basics, put into play, untap, and then shuffle your library. 
This, this, this is usually this one, unlike crop rotation, is usually just better in a ramp deck in general. But this is still pretty fine here because of the instant stuff and the fact you basically just get a free man out of it. So you get to trade one land for two. Next you have Hunter's Insight. For two and a green you get an instant, which choose target creature you control. And when that creature deals common damage to a player or plays one, to draw that many cards. With Calmax this is pretty good because obviously you're not going to make a bigger. But you're going to get a whole bunch of cards, especially if you copy this. You get to draw like maybe like seven or eight cards. Potentially. It's just really crazy. Just That's just like just without any counters. Next you have Hunting Pack. For free and metal for five and double green you get an instant which creates a 4-4 beast. Green beast creature token. There's not a storm so when you cast it, for each other spell cast this turn you get to copy it. So this can get out of hand pretty quickly but this is seven mana so most of the time you kind of have to rely on other players casting a whole bunch of spells and this is commander. This is You're probably going to get at least four or five beasts out of this if you cast at the correct time. So it's pretty, it's pretty decent. Next you have natural connection. For two in a green you get an instant. But you search for a basic and put into play tap and shuffle your library. This is a little slow of a ramp card, but this is probably one of the only instant ones, which is probably why it's strictly worse. But I think being an instant, it's it's fine for what it does. Just it's, it's a good, just a decent ramp card. Next you got slice and twine. So for two and double green, you get an instant, which destroys target artifact or enchantment, and they get to draw cards. So it replaces itself. All getting rid of a potentially problematic artifact or champion on the board. It's, it's pretty decent, even though it's a little expensive. Next, you got Tribute to the Wild. For one and a green, you get an instant, which requires each point sacrifice an artifact or enchantment. This is pretty good for two mana because it's going to be given by free cards. Now, sure, your opponent gets to choose what they think, but it does bypass indestructible, which does sometimes matter in artifacts, champions. While they do get to choose the worst most time, you will get, but most time you will be able to get at least one because you can make players sacrifice their soul rains and stuff. And it can get, and that can get pretty crazy. Next you get Wilderness Reclamation. For free and agree you get enchantment. If you give your end step, you untap all lands you control. This is really fantastic in the deck because obviously you're going to be casting a lot of spells during each player's turn. So you're going to want to be able to untap your lands and get all your resources back because you tap out on your turn and then you can just hold your mana up for other stuff. Next you get Crackling Drake. So for double blue and double red you get a you get a question mark attack and four toughness Drake with flying and its power is equal to the number of instant sources you own in exile and in your graveyard and when there's battlefield draw a card. This is kind of one of the beat sticks of a spell deck because it gets it gets really big really quick in the air, so it can swing for a lot of damage while also letting you replace itself by digging even deeper into your deck. This is a really good card in any spell deck in general. Next, you get Growth Spiral for green and blue. You get an instant, which you can draw a card, and they can put a land from your hand to the battlefield. This is just a good effect in general. Because not only is it a free draw, but it's also a potentially a free land. Especially later on the game, this can be cycled just later. Just, just be cycled when you just continue to draw from your deck, and yeah. And then you got Team Archer. So for green, blue, and red, you get an instant, which has three effects, you can choose one of them. Target creature you control gets plus one plus one to one turn, and then it fights a creature you don't control. Kind of target spell unless control plays free, or creatures with power free last can't block this turn. It's all pretty decent effects. The first fact is a bit situational, but usually Calmex will be big enough to kill just about anything on the board. So, and you get to make it even a little bigger for a temporary amount of time. Being a, being a decent counter spell isn't bad, but free colors just make it a little janky to play. And then the third effect, it's pretty okay. Like, usually your opponent's going to have multiple big creatures in play. So you still get an effect like about half their board, but it's still a pretty decent effect, especially on a mobile card. And then you got this, which doesn't really tell you much, it just tells you their standard draft and commander, it just kinda of tells you almost nothing. It's just a it's just a thing they put in these decks. But what do I think of that? I think it's a pretty good deck. There's some synerg there's there's a lot of instant synergies, there's a lot of draw synergies. 
there's some interesting synergies that I really didn't expect in here. Like, I did not expect a token theme, or at least a small token theme, but I think it's really important for one of these decks to definitely have tokens in general. And I do like that you get kind of a choice where you can either play a instant based commander, you can play a commander that wants players to be drawn cards, or you can play the partner of Haldan or Paco, which work together really well because Paco will be swinging, giving you the new exile card, and then he'll just get bigger. Well, Haldan will let you later on in the game cast those spells and use them to your advantage. I think all three of the choices are pretty good, especially starting off. There's definitely a theme for each of them. I think this is a pretty good one. Calmix is a really good commander. I think this is a really fun deck. And I can't wait to start playtesting it. So until then, see you next video.